In two, I think, previous videos of mine, uh, the background image hover effects video and the custom post types team profiles video, I showed you or I showed some elements which have this sort of skewed container effect with the images inside. So this is the, uh, you can learn to build this on the background image hover effect video. And here we have the same thing applied to templates uh, for custom post types, really cool. I did say that I would show you how to actually create these skewed effect image containers and I, I totally forgot. So thank you to one of my viewers who has asked for that video, here it is. So uh, what we need to do is uh, obviously pop, <laughs> pop along to the image, uh, the, the Elementor editor. And uh, first of all, let's let's actually look at the anatomy of one of these so that we can understand it, and then we'll build one out together. So in its most basic form, uh, we have a, a container and then within it, an image. So if you are looking to have something like a bit of text and a container within that, maybe a button, fine, that would be in this container. But we can we can achieve everything with the image container and the image. So let's let's have a look at that. Uh, regarding the actual container, we have the width set to what we would need and the height, and that's fine. Uh, you can see how loosely I've done these: four two six and two forty, uh, and I have this as a full width. Um, and the most important value on the container is obviously the skew effect. And so if we pop along to the advanced tab and transform, that's where you find things such as skew. And you can see by this icon here that we actually have an effect on there. Uh, let's have a look at what that is. It's minus 17 on the skew X. So this container has a skew X value of minus 17. That's cool, we need to remember that. And then if we pop along to image that is within this container, uh, we, you can see lots of different weird margins and I'll show you why uh, when, we, when we actually build one out. Uh, but the most important part of this is going down to transform on the, on the actual image, we see that it also has a skew effect and this is 17. So the container has a skew effect of minus 17 and the image within it has the value of 17. So too, does the, I never say so to, so that's my video lingo, <laughs> uh, does the container with the text here. If we pop along to the advanced tab, go to transform, we see that it also has a skew effect of 17. What that means is that when you apply a skew effect to a container, it will skew everything within it. And in its simplest form, all we've had to do is apply a skew effect to anything within the container and reverse it. So if it was minus five on the container, it would be plus five on the image. If it was five on the container, it would be minus five on the image. Okay, so I, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so let's build one out because there are a couple of little fiddly bits that uh, don't, you know, don't aren't so intuitive uh, when it comes to placing the image, should you be wishing to do that. Okay, so let's uh, create a new section and uh, I'm making it horizontal and I'll give it a bit of height. And now we have that, I just need to create a container so that we can play with. So bring one of those in and uh, I'm gonna leave it on full width but give it a pixel value of 220 perhaps, yep. And we're going to give it a minimum height of 320. So it's it's, similar dimensions to these uh, for the sake of for the sake of being similar. Um, I'm just gonna select the container and bring it all into the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a border values just so that you can see what we're doing here. Let's add an image into it. So as we can see on our demo one, we have the container S1 and then an image within that. So we'll add an image, sweep it on in, and obviously I have a padding value on this container, so I'll, I will want to zero that out. Uh, let's choose this image to play with on this tutorial so that we can see the effect on the vertical lines there. So select, and there we go. Okay, so the image is not quite meeting the height of that, but we'll deal with that. And, uh, and obviously I've got this padding value. So first thing I'm gonna do is go to the container. I'm gonna zero out the padding. Okay, that's good. Now what I would like to do is select the container, 
I already had it selected. Um, and go to transform, I'm going to apply the skew effect. So I would like it to skew the same way. Uh, so I'm gonna go into the minus value and let's just do minus, minus 12. Okay, that's good. Now you can really see from these vertical lines or not so vertical now that we have the skew effect to anything within it. So we'd like to reverse that. So let's select the actual image, go to advanced, transform, skew. Uh, we're going to add the exact same value, but in the plus. So I think it was 12 that I put on there, great. Okay, now it's time for a little bit of a cleanup and the, and the mop up of, of some of these untidy bits. So uh, the first one is that the image is actually spilling outside the container. And when that happens, we need to select the container and go to layout, additional options, overflow, hidden. And you can see that that disappears there, that's good. Okay, from this point, it does get a little bit fiddly. And to be honest, how you overcome all of this can depend on what image you're using, what the what the dimensions are of that image, what the dimensions are of the container. So essentially what we need to do is fill this container with the image. Um, now, if we give it a position of absolute, uh, that, that doesn't exactly help, but it does go some way to meaning that we can add different elements in there without uh, it pushing things around the container. Um, but you can get away with not doing that if you just wish to have have an image and the skewed container. Okay, so uh, the first thing we might think of doing is adding a, a more of a value on the image. I'm just going to show you that you can play around with all of this and it doesn't really do much. So that's a bit unfortunate. We still have left and right just not making it. It's not filling out. You might feel like you can play, you need to play with this and just fill it up, but one that, that loads a lot of image uh, when we might not have to. Um, but the other thing is that it can often, and it hasn't on this occasion, it can often uh, push the container, even if you've got overflow hidden. But also what we can do is we can add height here. So uh, what was the height of my container? My minimum height, 320. Let's just see what that does on this image, 320. That's pretty good. I like that rather than loading in the, the larger version of the image. Uh, but you can see that it's a bit squashed up here. It hasn't maintained uh, correct sort of dimensions. So what we need to do is go to Object Fit and Cover, and that's looking much better. Okay, so uh, you can play with offsets and things like that, but it tends to be quite messy. What we actually need to do is stretch this image out the easiest way that I've found. And uh, if you find an easier way, do let me know. It's um, always good to learn other techniques. But I actually uh, adjust it with the margin here. So I've unlinked the margins, uh, margin values on the image. And now on the left, for example, I'm going to pull it until we have full coverage of the container. And then I'll do the same on the right. And whenever we're treating something like a background image, whether it's in a section, container, whatever it might be, uh, it's always going to vary what you can see in the image. Uh, don't forget to look on the tablet and mobile and make sure that that's looking good uh, for this. So it's out, out of the gate, it's looking quite good on those. Uh, sometimes you might need to play with the top and the bottom margin as well, just to position it more correctly. Um, but essentially what you do is you stretch the image uh, to fill out the background of the container until you've got it as you need it to be. Now, because the image is actually uh, set to an absolute value, you can add in things like a heading. Uh, you might need to give it uh, a higher Z index there so you can have a bit of text there. Ba boom um, And of course, if you would like that to not be skewed also, you would just need to go to transform on the heading and uh, reverse that skew effect. So where it was minus 12, we're gonna bring that also to uh, 12. And of course, if we give it a margin, we can squash it on in a little bit and, and tidy all of that up. But I'll let you experiment with that. Um, otherwise, it's looking pretty good. So that is how to create the skewed image container effect. And if you'd like to check out those other videos where we play around with background image hover effects, or you'd like to apply that to a custom post type, 
and loop template, then please do visit those uh, respective videos. Uh, again, please like, subscribe. And I should also say that I'm right now editing my update videos for my Udemy course. So if you're interested in becoming a no coding web designer using Elementor and in this course, the free theme of Bloxy, then there are no plugins that you need to purchase in order to do this course. And you can uh, learn how to create an awesome brochure and e-commerce website using only free Elementor and the free theme that is Bloxy. So if that's of interest to you, please do follow the link in the description below. And uh, like I say, I'm editing those videos at the time of recording this tutorial. Uh, but if time has passed, then you'll at least find any discount codes that are currently active. So uh, go and take a look at those. Okay, cool. I'll see you later.